Hey guys, Level Cap here, and this week in gaming, DICE teased new Battlefield content, Insurgency Sandstorm's console launch date leaked, a web of hacking madness over Titanfall was uncovered, and much more. Battlefield 2042 might have an extra map at launch that DICE hasn't disclosed yet. Keen Eyes spotted London in the background of an image on the game's official website. It's tough to say what role London plays in 2042, it could be for the Hazard Zone mode or just filler as part of the backstory for the game. However, DICE doesn't just randomly include massive easter eggs like this. It's likely that the short film will serve as the reveal for Hazard Zone to some extent. In their latest investors call, EA referred to 2042 as a a stepping stone for the franchise finally going live service. Hazard Zone is the foundation of that live service. They also say that the live service content for 2042 will include some free to anchor components. Some have taken this to mean that Hazard Zone will be free to play, but it seems more likely that EA was referring to the fact that all of 2042's post launch content like maps, weapons, and specialists will be free. EA also said that they're going back to an every other year release cycle for battle Battlefield. 2042 was given an extra year for development. Since Battlefield 3, we've gotten a new entry in the franchise every two years at most. Battlefield 2042 will be the first game in the franchise to launch three years after the previous entry. Returning to an every other year release cycle means that a new Battlefield game will launch in 2023. It's a bit disappointing to hear that 2042 might not get three or more years of post-launch content, but that doesn't mean that 2042's various modes won't get extra support. EA recently hired the mastermind behind Warzone and he's working on a future Battlefield game. Portal and Hazard Zone might continue getting updates alongside the next Battlefield game like Warzone. DICE have been very careful to refer to both of these modes with language that separates them from 2042. It's Battlefield Portal, not Battlefield 2042 Portal, for example. In other Battlefield 2042 news, YouTuber GabbyTron revealed some key details about Battlefield Portal that answer some big questions. At launch, Portal will not offer a spectator mode. This could be seen as a massive problem for the game's competitive players as it means that there's no way to broadcast matches tournament style. Admin tools for the mode will include the ability to broadcast a server-wide message, kick and ban players, unban players, switch to the next map in the server's rotation, and close the server. Overall, it's clear that DICE have room to improve Portal. Lacking an essential feature like spectator mode is a massive oversight that partially undermines the point of giving players these tools in the first place. Hopefully DICE can add a spectator client after launch. The console port of Insurgency Sandstorm might be launching on September 29th. UK retailer Game currently lists an Xbox and PlayStation 4 version of Sandstorm available for pre-order. The launch date is September 29th, 2021. And unlike your run-of-the-mill placeholder listings, Game's website includes full details about what Sandstorm offers and wasn't taken down as of writing this. Typically, when a retailer leaks a release date, the listing has almost no information and is taken down quickly. The console port of Sandstorm has been a long time coming after multiple delays pushed it back by literally years. The game has come into its own on PC as a robust tactical FPS title with tons of content, maps, weapons, and more. Breaking info about the July 4th Apex Legends hack has untangled a web of conspiracies, hacking, and a plot to control Titanfall. Titanfall 1 has been unplayable for years thanks to hackers deploying bots that crashed the game's entire server system. The same hackers have also targeted Titanfall 2 with DDoS attacks and other malicious hacks. They went after Apex Legends using the same Titanfall.com website via in-game messages to cover their actions. The goal was to pressure Respawn into handing over control of Titanfall 1 servers and source code. With this in hand, they could resurrect the cancelled free-to-play spin-off of Titanfall Online. That game was briefly in development and it actually got a beta in South Korea before being shut down. Of course, the massive wrinkle in their plan is that they're the reason that Titanfall 1 is unplayable. The hackers are essentially attacking Respawn for problems that, well, they themselves created. It sounds like there are two overlapping groups of hackers here. 
One is a random sea of people maliciously attacking Titanfall just for fun, and the other is a more organized group that thinks taking Titanfall over by force will prevent the first group from ruining their fun. To accomplish that, they attack Titanfall and Apex Legends using the same methods perpetuating the problem. Now there's actually a lot more details about this story, but it's way more complicated than we have time to cover in today's video. If you're interested in reading more, we've linked a summary of the whole ordeal below that has some resources and and info. Splitgate's developers finally increased server capacity early yesterday afternoon. Before the update went live, players could be stuck in the login queue for hours. Now you'll be waiting a maximum of 30 minutes. There are also many more slots for players to log in, so the chances of ending up in queue are also significantly reduced. So far, they've been able to get the average queue times down to less than two minutes. This is excellent news for people interested in the game that haven't had a chance to play yet. Third-party reviewers were invited by Valve to check out their upcoming portable console, the Steam Deck. And calling it a portable console doesn't really seem to do the device justice though. Like Valve advertised, the Steam Deck is a battery-powered PC with cutting-edge internals. Reviewers are reporting a top-notch experience with games like Doom Eternal capable of running at a stable 60fps. The Steam Deck runs SteamOS, and Valve has made many updates that tailor it to the console-like experience. It has a built-in menu for adjusting screen brightness, volume, wireless connectivity, and more. But the most significant improvement is that the OS directly integrates with all of the device's inputs. Touch-sensitive analog sticks, touchpads, traditional face buttons, and a touchscreen all work seamlessly in-game and in the general OS. It sounds like Valve is gearing up to change the portable gaming landscape in the ways that they said they were going to in the reveal. It's just now being confirmed by reviewers. The PC version of Rust just got a big monthly update. Additions include procedurally generated underwater bases, submarines, fishing, sharks, and a ton of fixes. You'll need a submarine to reach the new underwater bases. Subs can be purchased from boat shops and hold two people. Submarines can be armed with torpedoes, and players can use a spear gun to defend themselves underwater. No word on when this update is coming to console. Things are changing for PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and by changing, we mean the game's name. The developers have updated the game's social media and store pages, renaming the game PUBG Battlegrounds. And considering that the BG in PUBG stands for Battlegrounds, well, that would make it say PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds Battlegrounds? The developers say that they're doing this to unify the game's branding under the PUBG umbrella and highlight PUBG New State as an example. And I think I made some comment about this when PUBG was first coming out, but PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds is honestly one of the worst gaming names around, and it's a miracle that the game has done so well, but now they're having to deal with the ramifications of such an obscure title. And before we move on to this week's final story, I'd just like to remind you that we'd always love to hear what you think about these stories in the comments. Are you excited about the future of Battlefield? Have you placed an order for a Steam Deck? Leave a comment letting us know. Sony held a private conference earlier this week discussing the upcoming PSVR 2. According to reports, it'll offer a 2000 by 2040 pixel per eye OLED display with HDR, eye tracking, and 110 degree field of view. The PSVR will use eye tracking to increase performance by dropping the render resolution when you aren't looking. The PSVR 2 will ship with updated controllers that feature finger tracking like Valve and Oculus's more recent devices. It'll also work with original PSVR titles. Sony are looking for AAA developers to offer their games with optional VR modes like Hitman 3 did. PSVR will be revealed next year as a PlayStation 5 exclusive peripheral. And there wraps it up for This Week in Gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.